Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reefy Ron, and today we're going to be doing a build guide video. This is for the corrosive sludge pump because I've been using it pretty frequently since it got released, and I now feel confident in recommending some builds. Um, these are not going to be looking at overclocks because I haven't got all the overclocks yet. Once I get all of them, then we'll discuss them and as well as we'll do like some tier lists and we'll do some builds for them too. But right now we're just going to be talking about the regular gear modifications and what I would recommend. Now I'm going to recommend two or three builds for this and we're going to talk about each of these. I don't have exact statistics for these because they haven't been updated on any sort of calculator yet. Um, when they do, then I might make another video just talking about um, how each of them affect the weapon. First up in our tier one, or whatever you want to call this, uh, the first option, we have high capacity tanks. This gives you 25 more ammo. This one I found to be pretty okay with the sludge pump. Um, I haven't really been hurting for ammo with the sludge pump, even when I've taken this to hazard five. I, I have, I'm fine with the 25 capacity because that's enough to sit there and spam fire the regular shots and even with the charge shots you still get um, you still get five bursts of it which already slow enemies down so reloading usually isn't a huge issue with this but nonetheless more ammo is always kind of nice for the guns um, we have better air pressurizer here as our second option this increases the projectile speed of the goo balls that we fire out this one I really didn't care for all that much. It's not bad, um, but it's it's not really necessary either. I think that your other two options are better than this one. So, I mean, if you like the extra velocity, if you just want to hit targets uh, quicker, this one's a pretty decent option. And then our last one is air sensitive compound. This one increases the goo and this one does make the goo quite a bit bigger. I can't tell exactly by what percentage. I'm assuming probably by 30 ish percent more. For each one of these this one i found to probably be the best overall um at least in this tier one although the high capacity tanks is pretty good too so that's usually the one that i go for in our tier two options we have the two different nozzles we have the damaging nozzle which gives us uh, 25 more splash damage this one i found to be okay um, it works pretty well against any of the armored enemies so praetorians and the uh, grunt guards that are armored Against everything else, it's not really necessary. Now, if you do this and you hit like a grunt directly, it should kill it pretty much instantly on any difficulty. But even so, just hitting something with a full charged blast from this, like any of the regular grunts, should kill them, um, even if it takes a few seconds afterwards on any difficulty. So the damage increase isn't super noticeable on regular enemies. This is more for armored enemies, and it works well on them. Our other nozzle is the more fragment count. This one's the one that I like more. Um, I do like having the 12 fragments more so than the 8. I can spread it out more, and especially with the air-sensitive compound, you can really cover an area with the goo, slowing down all the bugs that are coming there and dealing a good amount of damage. Um, this weapon I found to be really good in combination with any sort of AoE weapon so in particular the auto cannon with gunner um, either with the neurotoxin rounds which are a really strong combination with this or loaded with carpet bombers really good um, splintering shells is also really good same with any of the other driller weapons so if you want to take the cryo cannon or the flamethrower especially if you're running sticky flame flamethrower these work really good against crowds for our tier three options we have and kind of a slowdown this increases the puddle's lifespan uh, giving it another six seconds and giving the um, effect duration for another two seconds after the puddle is done this one i like i'm going to be showing a second build that works better in multiplayer than it does in solo uh, in solo it works okay but in multiplayer it works much better so this one not bad at all we have the potent goo mix this makes it so we do more damage i didn't really care for this one um, it is better if you just want to spam fire it at grunts because then you can kill them with three shots without even the corrosive effect taking place um, i don't think it hits any other breakpoints on other bugs but uh, it's kind of nice regardless so if you want to use it you can but it's not one of my favorite and then we have more goo canisters which gives you 50 more um, ammo which i really love extra ammo um, so then whenever you get a resupply, you no longer get 50 goo back, you get 75, which is pretty good. In tier four, we have the spill back extension. This makes it so all of our charge shots now only consume four ammo rather than five. So you do get more uses of the weapon overall, um, especially if you're using charge shots frequently. Your other option is the improved spooling mechanism. 
this halves the charge time needed to fully charge the gun. I've really been liking this one, especially on the higher difficulties, because the Goo Gun does take time in between shots. It's not quite like the flamethrower or the cryo cannon, where you can just kind of hold it on enemies until they're dead. And then the only thing stopping you from doing that is, well, if the cryo cannon either overheats or if the flamethrower needs to refuel. With the sludge pump, you can't really do that. You have to kind of charge it up, fire it, charge it up, fire it, charge it up, fire it. With this, it makes it incredibly fast to do that. So um, I am a real big fan of this one. I would really like the spillback extension, though, too. If you want to get the most out of your weapon, if you're really concerned with running out of ammo, then this one's probably the better option. And then in tier 5, we have a slowdown effect. This one does seem to increase the slowdown of this weapon quite a bit. I, again, I don't know what the exact... Um, percentages are I'm again guessing probably around 30 to 40 percent slowdown it feels about like that but it's kind of hard to tell since the goo already slows enemies down regardless um, this does make it really nice for multiplayer and again if you are using AOE damaging weapons so if you have another driller on the team using something else or they're using more of a damaging build for the corrosive sludge pump or if you have like an auto cannon uh, gun or somebody like that, they can deal a lot of AOE damage. Then we have the uh, corrosive damage with the name that I can't say. This one increases your damage overall. And this one does seem to make a pretty good difference in killing grunts as well as just killing everything. So I've really been liking it. Again, I don't know exactly how much damage this has increased or the percentage damage increase. Because this seems to be affecting the damage over time. And it does seem to eat away the bugs faster than uh, it normally would. And then our last option is the Ingredient X, which makes it so it's armor breaking. And this eats away the armor of the enemies. This is really useful if you shoot it at um, Praetorians or against uh, Grunts that have armor. Um, certain other bugs it does help against too. This does not eat away unbreakable armor though. So this won't do extra damage if you use it on something like an Oppressor. It's not going to eat away their armor and then you're going to be able to hit them anywhere. Um, it only works for things that armors can be broken on normally. Still, it's not bad. What I usually run is this build right here. Um, I did a video running this build earlier, which was the Hazard 5 um, Driller build, and I had no problems with it. This gives you a good amount of AoE damage. It makes it so your charged up shots go out pretty quick, and the acid eats away at pretty much all of the enemies very fast. Um, I particularly like this if you want to deal damage and just kind of a good overall sludge pump build. I found that this one is really solid. If you want more of an AOE status affecting weapon, so if you want to do more uh, slowdowns and stuff, then I would recommend either taking the air sensitive compound or the high capacity tanks in tier one, going with AOE or going with the duration add-on in tier three. Either tier four is fine. It depends if you want to keep using it, then I guess spillback's better. Um, if you just want to use it quicker, then the improved spooling mechanism's better. And then switching over to the slowdown in tier five, this build is really strong in multiplayer. In solo, it's not as good um, just because you're slowing everything down, but you're not dealing as much damage to everything. So all of your fights are going to take longer, and usually I like them to get over a little bit quicker. Now, if you wanted to go for more of an armor breaking build, um, or if you wanted to go maybe full damage build with this weapon, then I'd probably recommend going with the high capacity tanks, going with the damage nozzle, Going with either the uh, increased damage here, so that way you're doing even more damage whenever you hit anything, or the goo canisters, either one is really good. Then going with the spooling mechanism, just so that you can have a higher rate of fire when you're trying to spray out as much goo as possible. And then really any of these work, you could go with the acid, or you could go with the ingredient X if you want to break armor. Um, breaking armor is going to help because then you're going to deal even more damage to the enemies after you've broken their armor but the uh, extra acid damage is also going to help. So either one of these works too. I've only used this build a couple of times and it's been okay. Um, I kind of usually switch, I usually switch over here to the extra ammo because I do find myself running through ammo every once in a while. Um, but you could build it uh, this way too and then go with something like a high ammo weapon. Like uh, when I have taken this build, I've usually taken the Sabata with the oversized magazine and then just going with all the ammo possible. So then I can just use this to run around with and pick things off, as well as fire it into crowds when they show up, and then just use the uh, corrosive sludge pump to deal as much uh, AoE damage as possible to all the enemies. So yeah, those are my builds right now for the corrosive sludge pump. Uh, tell me what your builds are. I would be 
very interested in learning about them, as well as tell me how you're liking the sludge pump overall. I've really been enjoying it. I think it's a great weapon. So thank you guys so very much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And special thanks to the members of this channel, as well as my patrons over on Patreon. These guys get early access to videos like this. And if you would like to be a part of that, there are links down in the description uh, for you guys to go off and do that if you would like so. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!